Hi guys, um, today we're going to wrap up our function unit by knocking out uh, two uh, fun word problems or application problems. So let's do this. So fun problem number one reads, the cost in dollars to produce X baseball caps is C of X equals 4.3X plus 75. The revenue in dollars from sales of X caps is R of X equals 25X. Okay, that's too many words. Okay. So from the top, the cost in dollars, okay, the cost, the cost in dollars to produce X baseball caps. Okay, so what's so special about X? X represents the number of baseball caps. How do we calculate the cost and the unit is in dollars? Sorry, I, I, know, I don't know how to circle. Okay, how do we calculate the cost? Okay, the cost is given by this function, and I really liked how they named it. Uh, instead of picking like f f, instead of naming the the function f g or h, they picked a, a name that's appropriate to what we're, what they're trying to find, which is the cost. Okay, the cost to produce this number of baseball caps, namely x, is given by this function. Okay, nice. The revenue in dollars from sales of X caps is, okay, so the revenue, okay, that is given by this function, okay, 25X. So to find the revenue, we're going to take 25 and multiply it by X, so by the number of baseball caps. Problem A reads, <coughs> write and simplify a function P that gives a profit in terms of X, okay. So what do we want to do? We want to write a function. Functions have names, you know, the popular names f, g, and h. But we are not given the liberty to name the function however we like. We have to use the name p, which is very appropriate for this problem because it says, uh, give me a function that gives profit, and the profit has to be written in terms of x. Now. I know you're awesome and you can just like knock it out but you know the speech you know I'm not at your level so I'm gonna I'm gonna write out my words okay so how do we calculate the profit okay I know you know how to do it but let me do a quick example so I'm selling magic fingers it's a lie okay I'm never gonna sell this it's like the best one dollar investment that I've made I'm selling magic fingers they cost me two dollars Okay, but I'm not gonna sell it for two dollars, you know. I sell it for five bucks. Okay, so the question is, how am I, how am I gonna calculate my profit? So first, I have to take like the revenue, which is the money that we take in, and then we subtract from it the cost. Okay, so to find the profit, we're gonna take the revenue, which is like five dollars, and subtract from it the cost. Okay, so that will give me a profit of three. So let me write down the words. Okay, to calculate the profit, we're going to take the revenue, which is the money that we take in, and then subtract from it the cost. I'm going to circle the words in parentheses because um, it, it makes me feel good. Okay, so we are going to name this function uh, P. The profit should be written in terms of X. To find the profit, we're going to take the revenue. Lucky for us, they already give us a, a, a function for revenue in terms of X. So we have R of X and subtract from it the cost. Okay, the cost function is C of X. Okay, sorry, I should make like this C a little bit higher. Yeah, <coughs> whatever, there's no way to bounce back from that. Okay, so we have that the profit. Is given by the revenue to calculate the profit we're gonna take the revenue which is 25x and subtract from it the cost which is 4.3x plus 75 okay if you leave your expression like this I'm gonna start crying why because the world is not gonna read this is it's not gonna read this as 25x minus this addition problem the world is going to read this as 25x minus only the 4.3x. So what I want to get at is don't forget to wrap up your two-term expression. So that is the function uh, that gives the profit in terms of x. 
but the question is do we have to simplify it and the answer is yes because it says spit out the function and simplify it okay so let's go ahead simplify it so we have p of x equals 25x let's go ahead add the opposite distribute the negative however you spit it out that's how i want you to think about it opposite of a positive term is a negative term opposite of adding 75 is subtracting 75 i'm not going to pretend like i'm going to do this in my head <coughs> when we punch it in that will give us that 25x minus 4.3x gives us 20.7x and then we bring down the rest of the problem so the directions read uh, write and simplify a function p that gives profit in terms of x so pretty much like give me something that spits out profit in terms of x but we want to write it in function notation and we got to name it p okay so we have uh, profit is given by 20.7 x minus 75 so pretty much we're going to take 20.7 and the units are dollars why are they dollars because the units for cost is in terms of dollars so everything's going to be dollars to find the profit we're going to take 20.7 multiply it by x the number of baseball caps and then subtract 75 from it i guess those are our, like our startup costs okay uh, problem B reads, uh, find the profit if 50 caps are produced and sold. Okay, so you can answer this however we like. We are asked to find the profit. But we f we just found a nice way, we just wrote a nice function to calculate the profit. So let's go ahead and do that. Go ahead and write down the function to find the profit. So we have p of x equals 20.7x 20 uh, 20 minus 75. Find the profit if 50 caps are sold. So 50 baseball caps. So in this case, find the profit when x equals 50. Okay. Find the profit when x equals 50. So this boils down to find p of 50. Okay. Do what you got to do. We're going to substitute a 50 for the input of x. So that will give us 20.7 times x, which is 50 minus 75. Okay, this is all arithmetic, so I'm going to punch it in my calculator, and when we do, that gives us 960. Uh, usually, I'm pretty clear about writing your answer in a sentence or not. I didn't make any reference to that, so I will take the green light and not write the sentence. Just because we... Uh, don't have to write our answer in a sentence that doesn't mean that we are uh, um, exempt from including the units so we want to know the profit for 50 caps that are produced and sold and the answer will be 960 but with the units it will be 960 dollars fantastic so I said that we were going to do two problems this is our first one let me look for the next one and then we're out so fun problem number two reads uh, yeah, uh, the U.S. population that was foreign born during the years 1930 through 2011 can be modeled by the polynomial function. You can read P of X equals all that good stuff, where X equals 0 represents 1930, X equals 10 represents 1940, and so on, and P of X is percent. Okay, that's like a lot of, a lot of information for me. Okay, so from the top. The U.S. population that was foreign born during these years. Okay, so the people from the United States that was born outside uh, during these years can be modeled by this function. Okay, where x equals 0 represents 1930. So if we start at 0, uh, that represents the year 1930. x equals 10 represents 1940. Okay, so like... Uh, 1940 uh, from 1930 is 10 years later okay so pretty much what I want to get at is that X represents a uh, years past uh, 1930 which kind of makes sense that we're starting to count from the uh, from 1930 because it says from 1930 through 2011 so it doesn't make sense to start counting from 1920 okay so x represents years past 1930 and p p of x is the percent okay uh percent of the youth population that was foreign born cool so with that being said the question reads 
uh, used this function to approximate the percent of the U.S. population that was foreign born to the nearest tenth in each of the given year. Okay, so we're going to take this function to approximate the percent of all this good stuff. Two questions, two answers, and we don't have to write our answer in a sentence. I'll take that gift. And so in problem A, we want to know what is that percent in 1930. So in this case, 1930 corresponds to x equals 0. Okay, How, where did that come from? From the problem. Okay, we want to find the percent. So the percent is given by p of x. Okay, so all words aside, what this problem boils down to is this, you know, find p of x when x equals 30. Okay, so let's take that, uh, that function. To find the percent, we're going to take, hopefully I copy it right, 0 0.0042x squared minus 0.3187x plus 11.49. Okay, we want to find the percent when x equals 0, so let's substitute a 0 for x. So we substitute a 0 for x and do what you got to do. Okay, let me go ahead and circle all those x's so I can put them in the right place. Okay, so that will give us 0 0.0042 square of x or square of 0 minus 0 0.3187 times x, which is 0 plus 11.49. Under normal circumstances, I will totally punch it in, but I'm going to feel like a genius because check it out. Square of 0 is 0. Product of 0 and something is 0. Product of 0 and something is 0, and that will leave us with 11.49. So I want to like box this and move on, but check it out. Uh, use this function to approximate the percent of the U.S. population that was foreign born to the nearest tenth. Okay, so we got to round it to the nearest tenth. So uh, the digit in the tenths place is four. We're going to look right next door and looks like we're going to round up. So that will give us about 11.5. But what does P of X represent? The percent. So we're going to submit for credit 11.5%. Okay, one problem down, one more to go. Okay, so we want to find the percent in the year 2011. Okay, find the percent for part B. So P of X represents the percent. We want to find the percent in the year 2011. So we're going to do a little detective work. If it's 2011, well, that corresponds to X equals what? So we have that X represents years past 1930. So if it's 2011, I want to know how much time has passed since. So let me bust out a thinking area. We're going to take 2011 subtract 1930 from it and then I punch it in or freehand it and that will give us 81. So what I want to point out is this. If it's 2011, looks like 81 years has passed since 1930. So the year 2011 corresponds to x equals 81. <coughs> so we want to find the percent when x equals 81. So let me go ahead and write out the function. Do you have to write out the function? No, you can just uh, plug and check the numbers. But I said it before, I have a, a bad habit of putting the numbers in the wrong place. So I'm hoping that if I write down the equation, or in this case function, I won't make that careless mistake. Okay, so we want to find uh, P of 81. Are we going to freehand it? Of course not. We're going to use our calculator. Okay, so let's go ahead and substitute a 81 wherever we see the input of x. So that will give us 0 0.0042 times the square of x or square of 81 minus 0 0.3187 times x, which is input of 81 plus 11.49. So are we going to freehand this? Of course not. Huh. Good thing we have our calculators, okay? Uh, something that I want to point out is this. This is just straight arithmetic. You already passed your uh, arithmetic course, so you don't have to show off your skills again. Punch it in. I always use my graphing calculator because it, it um, projects nicely. But uh, for our course, we don't use graphing calculators. So let me bust out my, um, my regular calculator. So we have... 
point zero zero four two times 81 squared or the square root of 81. So we're going to put 81 and then we're going to look for the exponent of 2. Where am I? So in this model, it's the one that has x squared. Okay, look at that. Okay, minus 0.3187 times 81. And then we're going to add to it 11.49. Fantastic. Too many digits, but remember we are asked to round to the nearest tenth. So let me just write down uh, what we have. So this gives us 13.2315. We take our time, round it to the nearest tenth. Uh, the digit in the tenth place is 2. When we look right next door, it looks like we're going to round down, and that will give us about 13.2. So what is that percent? It is 13.2%. Okay, guys, that's my time. I'm going to go take a nap. Adios.